How many of you love the thought of living off grid? Never pay another electric bill again. Run everything off of solar. Are you thinking somebody only with great knowledge would be able to install one of these systems? I'm afraid it's going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars. In this video, I'm going to show you how to buy this equipment cheap. I'm going to show you self-installation wire by wire. This system is completely off grid and will run my entire tiny house. This short do-it-yourself video may change your whole idea of whether you can do it yourself with solar. If there's any questions you have, I'll be glad to help you. Just leave them in the comments. Hello guys, we're going to go over a couple things about solar. A lot of you want to know just the simple basics of solar, and are you going to be able to set up your solar system yourself? Well, I set up mine, and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it, and maybe this will work for you. Now, I've showed you these panels in several videos, but what I haven't showed you is in detail how they're hooked up and how they actually work. When you buy solar panels, you're looking for, in this case, 24 volt solar panels. Most of your panels these days are going to be a 24 volt. The way you're going to be able to tell is you're going to look at the sticker on the back of the panels and you're going to look at the open volt circuit or volts open circuit VOC. Let's go down underneath the panels here and take a look at the sticker on the back of these. Now what I'm seeing on the open circuit voltage or the VOC on these panels is about 40.3 volts. What this VOC means is if you have the panel set directly in the sun, you have a multimeter hooked to the positive and the negative, and you're not pulling anything or any amps off of the panel, it should show you a 40.3 volts. Then we also have on here what is called the VMP. That is 33.6 volts on this particular panel. What this means is the highest voltage that you're going to be able to get out of one of these panels when it's hooked to the charge controller is that 33 volts. And this is how we determine that this is not a 12 volt panel. It's not a 36 volt panel because it will only go to 33 volts. It's not a 48 volt panel. So what we're looking at is a 24 volt panel. How do we know that? Because it would be able by itself to charge a 24 volt battery because in order to charge a 24 volt battery, you have to be able to go above the volts of the battery. So if it was a bank of 36 volt batteries, 33 volts obviously would not be enough to actually put a charge into the batteries. This being said, this is how we determine that these are 24 volt panels. Now, let's see how we hook these panels together to make them 48 volts. Up underneath the panels here, there's two different types of wiring that you can do. You have series and you have parallel. Now, some of you already know this stuff and it's simple to you. But some of you don't, and that's why I'm explaining it. Now you can decide to do whatever type of system you want. You can do a 12 volt, a 24 volt, or a 48 volt. I chose to do a 48 volt. The reason being is it's said to be that a 48 volt is much more efficient. And when you're off grid, what's one of the biggest things you're looking for? That's right, efficiency. Now since I chose for this to be a 48 volt system, let me show you how I wired it up. Okay, once again, here's a panel, here's a panel. You got your positive and your negative coming off. Just, just like what you would have a car battery. Each panel has a positive and negative. Okay, so the way I, I wired this in series to make it 48 volt, because remember these are 24 volt panels. We already established that. So in order to wire it in series, you'll take the negative, you'll run it to the positive here. Then you'll take the positive and the negative, and there is your new power supply. By the way, once again, it's the middle of July out here, and uh, bear with me, I'm sweating my butt off. Now, let's go take a look at these panels. Okay, I've seen plenty of YouTube videos that show you how to do what I'm telling you to do here, but I figured a lot of people were still asking, so I want to show you how to do it. So, this is just like I showed you in the picture. 24 volt panel, 24 volt panel. Now... We're going to take the positive from this panel and the negative from this panel, run them together, like I showed you on the wire, and then the positive and the negative off this panel are going to have 48 volts. Okay, so we're going to take that 48 volts, we're going to leave the wires dangling here, and guess what, we got two more panels here, we're going to do the same thing to it. So we're going to do 24 and 24, we're going to make a 48 here also, okay? So now what we're going to do is take this 48 and take that 48 and we're going to run the positive from that 48 to the positive on this 48 and we're going to take the negative from this 48 and run it to the negative on that 48 and that's going to give us a total of 48 volts 
with all four of these panels hooked together. Now, we could have wired these panels in 24 volts with all four of them hooked together, but we chose 48, so that's what we're dealing with. Now, as far as the whole solar array being put together, let me explain it real quick. So, two panels in 48, two panels in 48, and then we have these different type of panels here, but yet they put out the same voltage. So we ran those two together. They're both 24 volt panels, and so we have a set of 48 volt here. So we have 48, 48, 48, 48, 48. So that's a 48, a 48, a 48, a 48, and a 48. Now what do you suppose we do with all these 48s? Well, I'm about to show you. We run them all together, and we send them to something called a combiner box. Yep, it's exactly what it sounds like. Combines everything together. So here is all the wiring, and yes, I could have done a better job. I could get it off the ground. I could put it in conduit, and I plan on doing something. I just have not done it yet. But here is all the 48 volt wires running up to the box here. Remember, all the panels are wired in 48 out here. So what we have coming here is all 48 volt. Now, inside of this combiner box, are breakers and that's just an added feature it is basically part of the protection if you touch wires together something shorts out or even help in an electrical storm in some cases now as you can see all the wiring coming in 48 volts and then we have a positive and a negative coming out this is everything combined together everything coming in from the panels and then the positive and the negative wire coming out guess where that's going in case you didn't guess the charge controller now you have to ask yourself what does this charge controller do yep exactly what it sounds like controls the charge now the way I have it wired is it comes up and it goes right into the side of the battery shed let's check out the battery shed so when purchasing the charge controller found that the best and uh, the most efficient is going to be a MPPT. This particular one here is a Morningstar MPPT 45. So what does the 45 mean? It means 45 amps. It's capable of taking on 45 amps of solar power. Now whether you do decide to do a 12, 24, or 48 volt, which you should do a 48 volt, the maximum amps you're going to be able to push into that charge controller is 45. Of course they make a lot bigger, 65s, 120s, uh, uh, you can have several charge controllers. So totaling my panels up here, we have a total of 3,400 watts. You know, if you're wanting to run a lot bigger system than the one that I have here, uh, more power to you. Literally. The reason I say that is because it's always better to have more power than you need than not enough when you need it. Okay, back to the wiring. So we have that 48 volt that comes in to the charge controller. That's coming from the panels. In this case, it's 48 volts, and the uh, amps that are on it fluctuate depending on the sun. Um, I have seen as high as 42 amps coming in. Um, and then we have a max of 45 amps, so I have to be careful. That's really close to the max. Um, then what we have coming out is a positive and a negative, just like we had going in. And it's going to the batteries. You've got your positive going to that battery over there, and you have your negative going to this battery over here. Now, just as the solar panels are done, so are the batteries. These batteries are 6 volt batteries, and they are wired in 48 volts. Why? Well, because we have a 48 volt system. So, 48 volts coming in, wire your batteries into 48 volts, that way you can charge your, your batteries properly. So... 6, 12, 18, 24, 6, 12, 18, 24, 24 and 24 is 48. And that's basically how we wired it. So we wired a set of four right here into 24 volts, a set of four right here into 24 volts, and then we crossed them over positive to negative, just like we did on the panels, and we made it a 48 volt system. So basically this is one big battery bank that's 48 volts now instead of eight single six volt batteries. Does that make sense? Okay, so here we are. 
charging our 48 volt battery bank with our 48 volt system from the charge controller this charge controller makes sure that the batteries don't get overcharged it makes sure that it goes through the processes that they need to go through um, like equalization those are things that help the batteries prolong their life and then we run from the batteries to the big inverter the big inverter here is what changes the power from 48 volts to 120 volts going directly to the house so just like everything else so far we have a negative wire coming to the negative and we have the positive wire coming around to the positive that's 48 volts going into this inverter now keep in mind this is made for 48 volts it is a 48 volt inverter charger now what inverter charger means is that it has the capabilities of being an inverter and a charger at the same time and you say well what does that mean well let's say that you have three or four cloudy days you're not getting any sun to your solar panels but yet you're still using electricity you're still using the refrigerator you're still doing your daily activities with electric you're running mostly off your batteries at that point and your batteries start to get low well this inverter charger is built to where you can back charge your batteries off of the inverter if you plug it in to the wall in your house or you plug it in in our case to a generator so in our case the generator would plug into here you turn your generator on and it would begin to charge the batteries when the panels just could not get the sun they needed to keep up with the demand you're using on these cloudy days now like I said the bigger the better or more power to you if you have a huge battery bank you might be able to go six days with low sunlight in my case usually after about the third day I'm struggling pretty good and I'll have to fire up the generator so now how about the prices and where are these things available at you know if you're wanting to build a system exactly like I built here um, I can guide you in the right direction to get this equipment Many times I've gone to Facebook Market and I have looked up solar panels and found panels just like these and purchased them. I'll give you an example of what I found on Facebook Market and what it cost me. So when I bought this particular system, the black panels that you see here, I bought from a friend and I got for a very good deal because he decided not to use solar panels. So in that case, let's talk about the ones I got off Facebook Market. So, these are the ones I got off Facebook Market. I got two of them here. Now, I actually bought four of them, but I got two of them on a different solar array. But right now, I want to talk to you about these two panels. These panels are also 312 watts a piece. They are 24 volt panels. When I looked on Facebook Market, I found these panels for $100 a piece. But actually, when I look back on it, it was such a good deal, I should have bought all 20 of them. It's almost like you can't have enough, especially if you find them for a good deal. My advice is, if you're going to build a system like this that's going to run an off-grid cabin, I would start with at least 10 300-plus watt solar panels. At least a 45-amp charge controller. Make sure it's an MPPT also. At minimum, a 2,000-watt pure sine wave inverter charger. Now make sure that it is a 48-volt inverter charger or a 24 volt inverter charger depending on the system you decide to set up looking at some of the prices online now this exact 48 volt inverter is about 950 dollars looking at this exact charge controller it's running now at about 565 dollars and when it comes to the batteries these are lead acid batteries if you're going to buy any lead acid batteries you're going to have to have a core and it will probably cost you around twelve to fourteen hundred dollars for a set of batteries that you can run up to 48 volts so if you're able to get these solar panels for a good deal like I said a hundred dollars for 300 watt panels or even hundred and fifty dollars for 300 watt panels that's 50 cents on the watt in other words you're paying 50 cents for every watt uh, that's an ideal price. If you can get them for a dollar a watt, $300 panel cost uh, $300, that's what it used to be. If you can get them now for $150, especially brand new, 
150 for a 300 watt panel i think you're doing pretty good now if you can get one for a hundred dollars that's a 300 plus watt panel now make sure these panels are 24 volt panels like i said sometimes they have them in warehouses and they're selling them sometimes they've been taken down off of a roof after about five years sometimes it's an insurance claim or something like that combiner box here is about 129 to 150 dollars all the wiring that you see up under here and dragging along the ground here you can get all that wiring to hook to these solar panels for about 150 bucks well then wiring up your battery shed like i have back there to your house is a whole nother video you're basically going to put wire underground coming from the inverter going straight to the fuse box in your house also that charge controller is going to have several different settings for different types of batteries that you may be using like lead acid versus the lithium batteries you know you're going to have to uh, size your own solar system by the electricity that you need that's a good thing about a solar system is uh you know you can always add things to it you can always uh you know add more panels um put you know two or three charge controllers go ahead and add uh, wind power to it if you'd like uh, there's several things you can uh, do to upgrade your solar system. I'm going to give you the name of a website where they sell used solar panels and they sell uh, new solar panels but damaged and things like that. And uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave some links in the description for the exact inverter charger that I have and the exact charge controller. That way if you decide to go with the same type of system that I went with, you'll know exactly what you're getting.